in approximately 27 AD, Jesus said, I will build my church. Have you ever wondered what a statement like this would have meant to the first believers of Jesus Christ? What did he mean when using the word church? More importantly, what did it mean for Jesus to build his church? And how many churches did he build? Jesus' great proclamation to build his church was made in a context that was deeply rooted in the Roman world. This means before we are able to understand what Jesus meant by using the word church, we must take our minds back to what it might have meant to the ancient world. In the Roman world, the word ecclesia, which is the English word for church, was used to refer to the assembly of citizens that gathered for political purposes. Since the primitive church was born in the Roman world, they readily used this word to define their community. Thanks to Christians, the word was used to describe not only the gathering of people, but the identity of the new followers all over the world. Historically, we find that this word never speaks of the place in which the people gathered. Rather, it spoke of the people and the method of assembling. But this now leaves us with the more puzzling question. How did the reference to a sacred building, now called the church, begin? Where did it come from? And how has this affected the original idea of the church? Sacred buildings have always been a part of the ancient world. Greek, Roman, and Jewish traditions pay great respect to the homes of their gods. However, the Christian tradition, in its original state, existed without a home for her god. Instead, she determined that God was at home within the community of believers rather than in a sacred temple. Therefore, Believers, the church, would generally gather from house to house. Acts 2.46 says, They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Since the temple in Jerusalem was there, Christians would still frequent the temple. However, there was a liberty in how they worshipped that did not limit or restrict them to any particular space. They quite literally worshipped wherever they came together. This was especially so after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. Philip Schaff, a 19th century Christian historian, writes that the Christians in the apostolic age erected special houses of worship is out of the question. As the Savior of the world was born in a stable and ascended to heaven from a mountain, so as apostles and their successors down to the third century preached in the streets, the markets, on mountains, in ships, sepulchres, eaves, and deserts, and in the homes of their converts. But how many thousands of costly churches and chapels have since been built and are constantly being built in all parts of the world to the honor of the crucified Redeemer, who in the days of his humiliation had no place of his own to rest his head.
Clement of Alexandria is believed to be the first to refer to the church as a place where the believers go. Yet even he would not have imagined the idea of going to church that is so common today. By the third century, there were only two sacred places for the Christian community, their homes and the cemetery. Christians had begun meeting in the cemetery to be closer to the dead, which was a practice adopted by pagan society. It was also their way of commemorating Christian martyrs. It wasn't until the fourth century that sacred buildings began to be built for corporate worship services as an ambitious endeavor by Emperor Constantine. His most famous building project was the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where it is believed to be constructed where Jesus was crucified and was the place of his empty tomb. The drastic impact on how church architecture has impacted Christianity is often overlooked. It is something that has affected the way the body of Christ exists. George Bonner and Frank Viola writes, all Protestant architecture produces the same sterile effects that were present in the Constantinian basilicas. They continue to maintain the unbiblical division between clergy and laity. They encourage the congregation to assume a spectator role. The arrangement and mood of the building conditions the congregation toward passivity. The pulpit platform acts like a stage and the congregation occupies the theater. Interestingly, the idea of church that the current world has become so comfortable with has no biblical example. Standing subject to question and the highest criticism to discover if such practices are truly beneficial, relevant, or at worst, the root of some underlying evil.